All right, so welcome to the video for Lesson 8 and Lesson 9's Composition of Rigid Motions Homework Assignments. So for rigid motion, we're doing our reflections, rotations, or translations. Rigid motions tell us that they don't change the size of the shape. So let's take a look at number one. This is actually a Regents question. So for number one, first thing I notice is that the orientation is different. So if I go from A to B and D to F, E, they're going in opposite directions. All right, this is rotating around in this way, this is rotating around this way meaning I need to have a reflection. So right away, choice C and choice T don't matter. <clears throat> if I reflect over the x-axis, well, my triangle would look like this. Well, not really the same as what I have there, so A doesn't make sense. The only one that makes sense is B. Let's look at number two. To rotate 180, that's where we take our x, y coordinate and make it negative x, negative y. So if I was to take A, for example, this is negative 1, 1. Well, that becomes A prime, which is 1, negative 1. And then after the translation, A double prime, well, if I subtract 5, that's negative 4, and I add 1, that's 0. Negative 4, 0, A double prime. If I look at B negative 5, 3. Well, after the rotation, I'm going to get B prime, which is just 5, negative 3. After the translation, I'm going to get B double prime. <clears throat> if I subtract 5, I get 0 and negative 2. If I was to look at C, well, C is negative 2, 7. After the rotation, I'm going to get C prime which is going to become 2, negative 7. And after the translation, I'm going to get C double prime. Well, if I subtract 5, that's negative 3, and add 1, that's negative 6. Negative 3, negative 6. Use a straight edge. The important thing here is it does say to state the coordinates, so you have to actually state them. Some of us forgot to do that on the last quiz. Oops. For the next one, again, remember we're working backwards here. So if I take the coordinate of 4, 1, if I reflect it over y equals x, that's where I just switch x and y, so that becomes 1, negative 4. If I rotate that 90, the, remember the rule for rotating 90 is I get negative y comma x. If you're not a rule person and you're a uh, paper turner, you just have to graph it. So that becomes 4 comma 1. What are the coordinates of this triangle after this image? Well, anytime you have a question like this, and this is just a good test taking skill, notice that um, all of the first coordinates are different. So if I just figure out which one J makes, I should be in good shape. So J is one, negative two. Well, after the reflection of the Y axis, that's gonna become negative one, negative two. And after the translation, I would add two, so that becomes one. Subtract 1, so that becomes negative 3. The only one that has 1, negative 3 as a point is choice 3. So even though it looks like you had to do three times the work, you really just needed to do one point. This asks us to describe the sequence of transformations that takes us from one triangle to the next. So one of the things I notice for sure is <clears throat> our coordinates are very different from each other. So I want to translate so that I'm kind of on top of at least one of the sides here. So I'm gonna translate from A to D. By doing that, I'm gonna create a triangle that looks like this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna translate to the right, one, two, three, four, five, six, and down, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're gonna go right, six, down, six. After that, <clears throat> well, I would just have to reflect over this horizontal line. Horizontal lines are y equals. 
and that's negative three. Totally say it like that. It doesn't say to use, you know, any type of special notation if I wanted to. Since I reflected second, I'd reflect over y equals negative three after translation of six comma negative six. This is not the only answer. There's more than one. So if you got something different and you want to check it with me, totally come and ask me. There's even a way of rotating this, right? So if you want to check your answer, come and see me. All right, let's look at lesson nine. <clears throat> so the homework for lesson nine starts by telling us that we have this composition. So I have triangle one, two, and three. So I'm going to translate, then reflect. So I'm translating, then reflecting. That was a Regents question. Number two, describe a sequence of rigid motions that would map this pentagon onto the other. So the first thing I would do, would I would translate E to E double prime. So that my pentagon looks something like this, and then reflect it over this horizontal line, similar to what we did in number five in the homework assignment for lesson eight. So I would say I would reflect over the line A double prime, E double prime, after I translated from E to E double prime. Again, not the only way of saying it. You could just translate it from A to A double prime or B to B double prime. There's other ways of doing it. I think that's just the easier way. Explain why the pentagons are congruent. <clears throat> Translations and reflections are rigid motions, which preserve size and shape. Those of you that are watching this video, number two for sure is on your test. Also, just to give you the heads up here, I'd also definitely know how to do number five from lesson eight. Because those are really two good questions I could ask on a test. Back to the homework though. So for this next one, if I rotate this 80 degrees, that's kind of weird, we never did that, but I don't really care about the rotation. I just care that you know that B becomes F and A becomes E. So C is gonna stay C, A becomes E, and B becomes F. Meaning BC, the line here, is going to become CF, the line here. So BC is CF, meaning AB here is going to become EF here. So AB is EF. And this last line here becomes this line here. So we know that that's C. Sorry for the yellow. Write the rigid motion and function notation. So I'd say a rotation about point C of 80 degrees. Quadrilateral of math is graph, and it says describe a sequence of transformations that would map this quadrilateral onto the other. So the first thing I could see is that you could actually rotate this 180. If I rotate this 180, 0, 0 is going to stay. The point 4, 2 is going to become negative 4, negative 2. The point 4, 4 becomes negative 4, negative 4. And the point 2, 4 becomes negative 2, negative 4. So we have the same triangle or pentagon or quadrilateral, whatever you want to call it here. <clears throat> then I just have to shift to the left one, up one. So I'm going to first rotate 180 degrees about the origin. Then I'm going to translate left one up one. That's a description, or I could even do a uh, composition notation. So I could say I translated first to the left one up one after I rotated about the origin 180 degrees. Again, not the only answer, but probably the easiest one to see. Hopefully this video helps. Keep studying. Remember your test is this week. Um, come and see me for extra help if you are struggling.
best of luck. <laughs>